Okay, ladies and gentlemen, any other questions about the Christian faith? This is your chance. Go on. Yes. I wasn't here when the so called jihadist uh, went to hit the woman or whatever happened. And as a Muslim, I will apologize. What's your question, sir? My, my question is what is it that happened in that altercation to, make, to instigate that reaction? Okay, so what happened, bro, is that one of the Muslims in this park touched this woman because she was filming in this park. Now you tell me as a Muslim, is that halal or haram? That's haram. Haram, exactly. We should be, first of all, we should be wait, wait, wait. If you want to debate, we'll debate. I'm taking we questions. Well, I've got, a, I've got a point of discussion for you if you want to debate. We can have a discussion. Okay, let's have a discussion. <laughs> so, um, can I put this back in here, please? What's your name? Elias. Elias, nice to meet you, Elias. Bob. Bob. Nice to Good to meet you. Meet you. Yeah, thank you. That's You're looking very elegant, sir. Thank you. So are you. Oh, well, I, I hardly. Hardly by comparison. You're looking yeah, far it's more all, flash. It's all subjective. Yeah. So, so here's my question to you. According to Islamic teaching, as a Christian, I condemn polygamy. Because I believe that the ideal is one man and one woman. Because in, in a monogamous relationship, you have parity, you have a kind of equality of dignity, you have an equality of the sharing of rights. But in Islam, you are, as you know, allowed polygamy, up to four wives, right? Indeed. But as part of Islamic teaching, you can have secret second wives. I know you're going to dispute that, but I'll show you plenty of evidence, okay. right? It, where, which scripture is that in? Is it in the right. Quran? So I'm gonna, we're going to talk about it, okay. right? So my question to you is, why in Islam can you have secret second wives? Well, hang on a minute. You haven't even shown me the evidence that we can. Okay, great. <laughs> Let's do that then. Uh, but one, one point Let's, I will say yeah. is that Nabi Isa, a beloved prophet to all Muslims. Who's a Muslim here? Put that in. Please don't take it out of my bag. Alhamdulillah. What do we think of Jesus? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Jesus Wait, was a sorry. Torah. Was a Torah. Let's have a conversation. Go on. Jesus was a Torah abiding yes. Jew. Yes. Muslim, depending, on, depending yeah. on your idea. Yeah. In the law of the Tanakh, how many wives are you, are you permitted to have? How many wives did Nabi Musa have? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the, the question is about what practices happened in Old Testament law. And it is true in Jesus Old... Was a wait, wait, of sorry, Old are Testament. we going to have a conversation or are we going to have no, a... Sorry, do, not, I don't want to be do you want to have a conversation? This is my first one of these. We'll have a conversation. Then let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. So that means when you talk, I listen. And what happens when I talk? Indeed, I, I apologize. I okay, apologize. right. So ladies and gentlemen, the, 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 what's, your, what's your name again? Elias. Elias is, Elias, if you like. Elias is absolutely right to point out that in the Old Testament law, there was the practice of polygamy. However, he's not talking to a Jew, ladies and gentlemen. He's talking to a Christian. And a Christian believes that Christ started a new covenant. And in that new covenant, monogamy is the law. The idea of one man, and one woman. Now the brother asked me to show him the evidence, ladies and gentlemen, that polygamy can be practiced in Islam secretly, that you can have a secret second wife. And when he's ready for me to show that evidence, I will do so. But what I want to point out, ladies and gentlemen, very briefly, is the injustices of the practice. If you're the first wife, and then your husband comes to you, and says, or doesn't say, and sleeps with you, and has sex with you, having just had sex with a woman that you don't know about, how many of you, would con how many of you women would consider that just? How many of you would consider that adultery, cheating? Why? Because he lied. Because he didn't tell you. So if I can demonstrate that in Islam, secret polygamy can be practiced, would you not agree with me that Islam teaches injustice? That's a question for you, Elias. If I can show to you that secret marriages can be practiced in Islam, would you agree that that polygamy is unjust, that it is wrong morally? One thing I have to say before I directly address that question, 
is I have to rewind the idea that Jesus did abrogate the law of Moses. Now, all mainstream scholarship now indicates that Jesus did not, Jesus did not abrogate the law of Moses. Elias, talk to me. Jesus did not abrogate the law of Moses. Therefore, as a Christian, and all of us here as followers of Abrahamic religions, I believe, yeah, we all, we all respect Moses, Abraham, yeah? Do you respect Moses? Wait, 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 no, 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 one, one, one question. Just, this is part of my unfolding my answer. Do you respect and adore Moses? Yes. Okay. Did Moses have more than one wife? Yes. Yes. Are you saying that Moses was disrespectful and unjust? No. Okay. So, so can I reply now? There's one. Can I reply? There's one point. No, okay. Let, wait, wait, let's do point for point. Okay. Right. Are okay. You, now notice, Elias has not yet addressed my I know, question. I know, I will address. I know, so I will what address was my question? question? Your question was how I feel about secret second wives in Islam. Is it unjust? First, first of all... No, I wait, wait, wait. I'm going to state what my question was, Elias. Yeah, yeah. I said, when I demonstrate that Islam practices the, the, the practice of secret second wives, would, do you think that that is just? If you demonstrate to me the practice that Islam allows second wives, I will say to you that that is not something that I myself would do. That's and not my question. I would say to you it's something that I myself would not do. Great, still I, not my question. I do not have any evidence for it or have seen any evidence for it in any scripture of hadith or in the Quran. Okay, now let me reply. So ladies and gentlemen, he has not actually answered the question that I asked. I'll remind you all what the question was that I actually asked Elias. I didn't ask him, would you do it? That wasn't my question. My question was, is it unjust, ladies and gentlemen, to sleep with a woman who is your wife who has bore you children, who has dedicated herself to you, and not tell her that you are sleeping with another woman. Bearing in mind that you can receive sexually transmitted diseases where there's no promiscuity involved, like the clap, you can, re you can transmit that between one woman and another if one woman has poorer hygiene than the other one. So to not tell the other woman means that you are putting her at risk at sexually transmitted diseases. I want him to answer whether that is just. Now he mentioned about Moses. Moses was a just man. Moses was an honorable man. Moses followed the law of Torah. Torah allowed polygamous marriages, but Torah did not permit secret polygamous marriages. Furthermore, He's talking to a Christian. Christians follow the new covenant and in the new covenant the model is one man and one woman in marriage. That is what we practice. But by doing so, you're denying all of the mountain of evidence that says Jesus, the people who Christians have erroneously worshipped as God, did not abrogate the law of So Christ. let me address that. Did not abrogate the law let of Let me address that. Therefore, Paul, the heretic, who did not ever meet Jesus, who is in your holy book, yeah, made a lie upon the words of Jesus, made a lie upon God. Did Jesus eat pork? I stuck for a while to believe. Right, Of Elias. course he didn't eat pork. Elias. Yeah, you Christians eat pork. Jesus shall I, shall I address and the point? followers of Jesus all were polygamous. They were polygamous. Shall I follow? Let's address that question. But now you're saying that Moses, Abraham, all of the pre- what would you say? The Old Testament. Shall I address Testament that question? Prophets are unjustified in their practice of having multiple wives. Okay, Elias, let me reply. What I would say is who is better at judgment here? Is it Musa, Moses? Is it Abraham? Yeah, with Sada and Hajar? Or is it Paul, the heretic? Or this okay, no, no, right, ladies and gentlemen, let's just be clear. Notice he still has not addressed the question I asked about secret marriages in Islam, about whether they are just or unjust to the first wife. Notice he's avoided that. But he has talked about Jesus abolishing the law. Let us be clear. Jesus said not one jot, not one tittle, not one letter or stroke of the law shall disappear until... Did everyone hear that word? Until, did everyone hear that word? Oh. Until oh, yeah. all has been accomplished, yeah. all has been fulfilled. So in other words, yeah. in the worldview of Jesus, there is a time coming 
where the law of Moses will disappear. It will be fulfilled. And when is that time, ladies and gentlemen? According to the Old Testament, according to Moses and Isaiah, the Old Testament prophets, that time comes, why? When the Messiah comes. Because the Messiah will unite Jews and Gentiles. And if the Jews and the Gentiles are united in the church, well, what happens to the laws of separation? They have to disappear. They have to go away so that Gentiles and Jews can be united. Jesus said that it is not what goes into the mouth that makes a man unclean, but what comes out of the heart that makes a man unclean. I am Messiah. Your wudu, you are your wudu does I not make you clean, ladies and gentlemen. If you, ladies and gentlemen, are practicing polygamy and secret polygamy, you are an adulteress. And it doesn't matter if you avoid pork. Let me just point out, Jesus didn't eat camel meat, but Muhammad ate camel meat. He seems to have forgotten that. Muslims can eat camel meat, and they have to do wudu after eating camel meat, but they can eat it. But for Jesus, it was haram. Jesus stood praying, standing up, looking towards heaven, calling God Father. Muslims look down. They don't address God as Father. Christ worshipped in a temple with priests. Muslims have no priests. So if we're going to do who's more like Jesus game, he's going to lose. Now I want him to address the original topic and stop running away from the topic. Is the practice of having second secret wives just or unjust to your first wife? I'll tell you what, my friend. Because you just put in quite a lot of different topics there that I think actually do need to be addressed. The who's more like Jesus thing. I mean, there are so many different levels of analysis that we can look at that. Jesus, 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, fasting. What's Ramadan? Fasting. Sir? Jesus. What's Lent? Jesus. What's Lent? What's Lent? Give, fasting. Giving up some chocolate. How many of you really practice Lent in the same degree as we practice Ramadan? How many of well, you better, really say it? Better. Better. Well, Alhamdulillah. Better. They alhamdulillah. do two big meals, one in the morning and one at night. Alhamdulillah We do one meal a day. We pray. We pray to the Lord, Allah, just like Jesus would say in Aramaic, Allah. We pray to him five times a day. How many do you pray? How many do you pray? Christians are praying all the time. Good. It's not in your doctrine though, is it? It's not yes, in the doctrine. Yes, it is. G it's not in the doctrine. Yes, it's taught it's to pray the all the time. Answer the question. Now come back Muslims, to the real topic. Muslims live in an ascetic way. Jesus was an ascetic. Yeah, someone who submits the ego, submits the nafs. We control ourselves. We act in accordance with the divine way. We pray. We fast. We act with peace. Yeah? Christians? Oh, I mean, the real ones amongst us. The real ones amongst us. I think this brother is suffering from a lot of Christophobia right now. I don't have Christophobia. Bigotry listen. against Christians. No, listen, that's not true. He doesn't know enough Christians. I I, in fact, I love, I love, and I'll say this again. I love the Ahl Kitab. I love the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews. But the real practicing ones, because I'm afraid to say my Christian cousins, you are dying in number. Why? Because the doctrine is weak. In Islam, we must follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Okay, we can we come back? Right. right. The question. The question. The question, question you've like avoided, a, yes. First of all, where is the evidence to say that you can have secret wives? Okay. First of all, we haven't presented it. I'm going to Second present all, it right now. I am saying to you now, as my answer, as a married man, my wife is here, I personally do not want to engage in polygamy and I most certainly do not want to engage in secret polygamy. It is not something that I believe to be correct. Can I show you myself. the evidence? Right, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. I fully accept that he doesn't want to do it. That's not a problem. He's better than Muhammad. No, I'm not. Stuck but life. ladies and gentlemen, the life. problem is he can do it. That's the problem. He can do it. 
That's the problem. As a Christian, I can only have one wife. And I can't have secret affairs behind her back. But according to Sheikh Ibn Jibreen, this is what he says. Who is Sheikh Ibn Jibreen? Who is Sheikh Ibn Jibreen? He is a Muslim scholar of Sharia law. He's a liar. He, oh, 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 suddenly they're checking. Suddenly I'm presenting the evidence and he has a problem. Suddenly I'm presenting the evidence and he has a problem. Thank you, I'm going to carry on. So ladies and gentlemen, Sheikh Ibn Jibreen, who is an ulama, who he is not allowed to speak against as a good Muslim. He can't speak against his ulama. So he mustn't criticize him. Gives his fatwa. Gives his fatwa in the books of fiqh about whether in Islamic jurisprudence it is halal for a Muslim to have a secret, adulterous second marriage. This is what he said. Sheikh Ibn Jibreen was asked, is it essential for a marriage to be valid that a man should inform the woman he wants to marry that he, ha he is married to another one? If he is not asked about that, are there any consequences if he denies it if he is asked? Listen to what the ulama say. The man is not obliged to tell the woman or her family that he is married if they do not ask him. In other words, according to Muslim scholars, Muslim men can have secret marriages. Let me ask, let me ask, the lies of the devil they are. He's right. They are the lies of the devil. And if you follow the lies of the devil, those lies will take you to hell. Because those lies, those lies, ladies and gentlemen, will take you to hell. Because this is the deen of shaitan. It is not the deen of God. Okay. First of all, you've just quoted one member of the ulama, yeah? I don't know how many other ulama dispute that point, okay? So that doesn't necessarily mean anything to me, okay? But one thing that you did say is that this is the deen of shaitan, this yes. is the deen of the devil. In all of our Abrahamic faiths, the worst sin that one can commit is shuruk. The worst sin that one can commit is to associate partners with the one true Tawhidic monotheistic God of Abraham, yeah? So for you to worship a man. Can I get my Quran? For you Quran to worship a man. And then for you to say that we are the deen of shaitan. When you worship a finite, mortal member of creation, a blessed one, I'll give him that. A blessed one. But a member of creation nonetheless. Shaitan is Allah's associate partner. Shaitan is Allah's associate partner. Keep going, bro. Keep going. What's this you got in your hand? Right, so ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. I will debate him on shirk if he wants to debate on shirk. But the question is about secret marriages. Let's just let's let's just think about why secret marriages are the dean of shaitan. Why, ladies and gentlemen? Because they involve deceit. Because they involve hiding things about yourself that you know to be true. If you're going to share a bed with a woman, okay. it is incumbent upon you, ladies and gentlemen, to be transparent with her what you are doing with your body. I agree, by the way. And he agrees, I agree. which yeah, means that he's mean? now taken a step away from the Deen of Islam no, and a step closer to the Deen of Christianity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. Because, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, absolutely. because, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely. out of the two religions, it is my religion that says it is haram to hide another marriage. It is my religion that says it is haram to have a second wife. His religion says that he can have a second wife, that he doesn't need the permission of his first wife to have a second wife, and he can keep it a secret 
from his first wife. Your religion. Which Your means, religion. wait, Vindicate. I'm landing, I'm landing. Your One second, I'm landing, and then I'll let you reply. And la ladies and gentlemen, this is the guy. This is the guy. This is the guy that took a swing at me. This is the Aki that took a swing at me. You're a representative of Islam. Look at you. You're a representative of Islam. Bro, yes you are. A bad one. You're a bad one. He said it. Right, if you take a swing at me, I've got a Quran under my arm. If you take a swing at me, that Quran will be dropped. Just stop it. Look at the Islamist. This this person is not representing Islam right now. This is why we must stand up to them. What do you mean them? Them. No, because these Islamists. Islamists. These I myself, Islamists. I myself, is he a Muslim? I myself am a Muslim. I would never ever say that someone is not a Muslim. What I can say is that right now his behaviour is not in accordance with the way that it should be. But I will never say that he is not a Muslim. My and man is. My man is. Straying. That's why we should stand up to them. My man is straying. Right. Man is straying. Now, ladies and gentlemen, okay. let's come back to the topic. I'm going to try and land my point so you can reply. The reason why it is unjust, ladies and gentlemen, like is one, if the man, if the man has secret children that the first wife doesn't know about and the man dies, according to Sharia law, both women are entitled to an equal share of the inheritance and so are all of their children. But if the second wife is secret, she will be at a disadvantage to claim her rights. Secondly, secondly, it involves putting the first wife at risk because if the man contracts a sexual disease from the secret second wife, he could infect the first wife. It involves a betrayal of the trust of the first wife because the first wife thinks I'm in a monogamous relationship right now, but the man knows that there's a polygamous relationship going on. And all of these are unfair to the woman, ladies and gentlemen. In Christianity, all of these problems are avoided. Okay. So reply to the point, go on. I think it's hypocrisy par excellence. For someone to say, yeah, that because of this, you know, th this means... I said it's hypocrisy. Your points are hypocrisy. Why? It was the Sharia, the Sharia law, the Islamic law that bestowed rights upon women. You mentioned, you mentioned inheritance rights. Where are the inheritance rights for women in Christian doctrine? Where are they, brother? Where are they? I'll let you finish no, your no, points no, no, and I'll no, reply. Answer this. Where are the inheritance rights or the divorce rights for women in Christianity? There was no liberalization and equality for women in Christianity. Whereas in Islam, the religion that everybody is slandering, yeah, to be sexist, to be sexist, which is your whole, the whole premise of your argument, yeah, was the religion that allowed women to get divorced if they were in oppressive marriages or for whatever reason they wanted, that allowed women to get inheritance from the husband or from the father. Yep. So hang on a minute. Which is more unjust? You had a lot to say a moment ago. Do you have anything to say? You, you had something to say, sir, behind the camera. What's the answer? What's the answer to this? Okay, do you want me to reply? Yeah, I'd love to see it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. notice yeah. that I have made a substantial criticism of the Islamic practice of secret second marriages. And absolutely no defense was given. Only the only argument was yeah. is we Muslims gave rights to women and you Christians did not. He doesn't know what he's talking about, ladies and gentlemen. How so? How so? I'm going to tell you why. Because until Christianity came along and converted Europe, women were not even given a choice in marriage. It was because of Christianity that women could refuse marriage. In, it was because of Christianity that women received equality in marriage because just like in Islam, the Roman pagans practiced polygamy and the Jews of the Old Covenant 
practice polygamy. Equality. And it was, ladies and gentlemen. He's rattled, ladies and gentlemen. He's rattled, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Christianity gave women these rights and Islam is taking them away. And he's, he Let's talked no, about let inheritance. Let us focus. He talked about Let's inheritance. Let he talked Let about know. inheritance, okay. ladies and gentlemen. In Christianity, a daughter and a son can e receive equal share of can. their parents' wealth. Can. But in Islam, a daughter receives less than a son. Yes. Less than a son. Where yeah. is it, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. Where is but, it? But, I am not making an argument for liberal society. Okay. I'm a Christian, not a liberal. And I am talking about the fact that in Islam, and he hasn't addressed this point at all, that in Islam, you can have secret second marriages. We've spoken about that ad nauseum. He has not Move defended on, it on. once. He has just tried to change the okay. topic, and I don't blame him okay. because there is no okay. moral defense for the immorality of Islam. On the point, on the point I, I, yeah, and I'm not a scholar. Let me just come out and say, yeah, I've been a little bit audacious having this conversation. I am not a scholar, yeah, but I have read, but I have read the Quran and I read the Quran on a daily basis, alhamdulillah, and the Hadith I'm trying to read as well. And I had never ever come across anything about secret marriages. So it was new to me. It was new to me when I came across it. Okay, another one, please. It was new to me when I came along and had this conversation. The brother here, Ben. Ben? Right. Bob. Bob, sorry. It's all right, don't Robert. Bob. Call me whatever you like. <laughs> Everybody else does. <laughs> Bob presented one excerpt from one shake. Yeah, about it. About it. And then quoted it as absolute biblical fact. Now, for me, look, I said this is not a practice that I will do. There's my answer. It's not a practice that I will do. Whether or not an obscure shake says it's acceptable or not is whatever. I would not do it. But now, moving on the conversation, moving on to the general point about equality between the genders. There is no, between the sexes, should I say. There is no argument here. Where is it within biblical doctrine that it says that not, not, not women can get 50% of the inheritance, but women should get 50% of the inheritance. Women must. In the Sharia, women's rights are enshrined. Enshrined. Yeah, which was a complete liberalization for the Abrahamic faith and for the world at that right. point. And your, wait, your comparison of saying in the pre-Christian uh, era in Europe, uh, women had no rights. I mean, hang on a minute. We're talking about so many different disparate yep. cultures. How could you make such a sweeping statement? Don't worry, Baba. Islam every day. Come up. Islam every day. Come up. <laughs> hey, no, it's are you done, Elias? And why, and why Elias, are you, are you done? Yeah. I'm almost done. But why is that? That's a good point. Why is it that every day Islam come up and Christianity go down? Why is that point? Why is that point? Why everywhere? Everywhere, bro. And let's just look. I know that. I know that. Look. I know that you're. Elias, land so that I can reply. All right, anyway, can I reply? I'm done. I'm right, ladies and gentlemen. But Robert, no, wait, 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 ladies and gentlemen, done. are you done? I just want to leave him with this point. He talked about shirk. Let me show him shirk in his Quran. Shirk, ladies and gentlemen, in the Quran, ladies and gentlemen. So what is shirk, ladies and gentlemen? Is is to ascribe partners to Allah. To worship other than Allah yeah. or to give the attributes of Allah to someone other than Allah? Am I being fair, Elias? Yeah. Uh, I would say yes, to give praise and worship to something other than the one. Or to give partners to Allah in that which Allah is doing, like saying Allah had partners in creation or Allah had partners. Right, yeah. Yeah. you all that, heard. That domain, that domain is his Great, own. you all heard that I have given the correct definition of shirk. Now let me show you. Shirk in the Quran. Surah 33, Ayah 36. It is not fitting for a believer, man or woman, when a matter has been decided by Allah and His Messenger. Sorry, what? And 
his messenger. So Allah has a partner in making a decision, ladies and gentlemen. That is shirk, ladies and gentlemen. That is semantic. Go on, explain why it's semantic. Extremely, extremely weak argument. Go on, explain. I don't even explain why. You read one particular. You read one particular English translation, which may well have been a mistranslation. If we read it in the exact Arabic, it might not have said and. Arabic is a very, I've very Arabic, it complex does. language I've with many layers. It does. And anyway, it does. It says what? I've checked it. Right. It does. And Muslims have confirmed that it does. It does. Okay. All right. It says and okay. his messenger. It is obviously Allah subhanahu wa taala is not saying that Muhammad makes the decision. Allah makes the decision and Rasulullah delivers the decision. Okay. It is not that he makes it. And anyway, I'm done. I'm done. Right, well, yeah. wait, wait, one second. No, 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 I'm done. Wait, wait, so wait. I was done two minutes ago. Okay, Elias, I want to. You, respect. I, I respect the I respect fact that you've. You. Let me give you a gift. Yeah. Just as a. Don't give me a Bible. Yeah. All right, yeah. I won't give you a Bible. I'll give you something other than a Bible. Was that Robert? <laughs> Who's Robert? <laughs> You're Robert. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, JC. <laughs> right. Okay. You don't want a Bible, so I'm not going to give you a Bible. I don't want any pamphlets about about Christianity. I've already got a Bible. There you go. Yeah, should we? There's a gift for you. What? What about it? That's the Quran. Like are you? Would you? What, are you giving it to me? I'll take it. Actually, I'll take that. I don't want it. Okay. Ladies and this. gentlemen. This is what I have. That, this is all I need. Those that have a closed mind cannot be taught. Yeah. And those that assume that truth cannot be found, even when they cannot defend the truth that they have, Brother. are in risk of hell. Brother, you're talking to someone that has that has the Bible on his bookshelf. I have the Talmud. I have several different East Asian scriptures and a whole shelf full of philosophy. But not I have an open mind. mind. I have an open mind. He yes. I just don't need, your, okay. I don't need the propaganda pamphlet. Look after Thank yourself. You very much. Take care, Elias. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, did anyone hear Elias? Ladies and gentlemen, did anyone hear Elias defend secret second marriages? No, he didn't, did he? 